just to anticipate any trouble. Take a letter from Wheelhouse Grange, Albatross Lane, Havant, to the Chairman of the Governors, BBC London. Sir, I was disgusted to find the BBC had had the effrontery to turn its cameras onto the private marine activities of our English coast, and what is more, on a Sunday morning when they should all have been in church. My aunt, who is not an expert oarswoman, was shown on the screen without her permission. My own picnic party, with my niece and daughter, was also filmed without permission, as was the party of my staff who were on holiday at Burnham on Crouch. How would you like to have the private moments of your family life shown to millions and commented on facetiously by a man with an unpronounceable name? Is nothing sacred? There are many good sailors at the yacht club. Why did you only select shots of incompetent amateurs? And why this emphasis on food and drink? Are you in the pay of the breweries, sir? What will foreigners think if this film is shown abroad as depicting the English way of life? Do we only live for pleasure? Surely on Sunday, at least a reverent expression might have been shown somewhere. And I have one final and very serious complaint to make. The wife of my managing director kindly came down to the shore to meet me and your cameraman took the unpardonable liberty of filming her as she was getting ready for the bridge party to which we were going, yours, etc. A happy Sunday slowness haunts the Thames between its Buckingham and Berkshire banks, the river of our contemplative youth, river of family parties, cockney salts, who with such skill can push the boat away and moor her safely into Bolter's Lock. For Londoners are faithful to the Thames, as Thames has been to them for centuries. Sweet Thames, run softly till I end my song. So Spencer said it, and we say it still. River and London mingle into one. Riparian rights and lock keepers and locks. Sluices and weirs and pumps and fishing permits. Sweet Thames, the sliding wonder of our youth. Fish on, fish on, until you find yourself, or find yourself again in years to come, alone among the strangers in the boat, or in the bosom of your family, who don't seem quite to know what they should do with all those awkward bits of coiling rope. Bear us along the river of our youth, into the long-remembered world of tea, down here in Sussex, where, from Sheffield Park, the Bluebell Railway runs to Horsted Canes. Here, middle age remembers joys of youth, and youth can share the joys of middle age.
down in Sussex, listen for it here. The sound the poets hated makes by now a melancholy music in the hills. Whiter than the daisies are the flannels in the field. It's an heraldic game, and cricket is the heraldry of Sussex. And cricketers are large, large-hearted men, and boundaries are waiting to be saved. Thank God it isn't I who have to do it. I like to watch the calculated bow, the subtle curve along the cherished grass, the hushed awaiting till the final kiss of wood on wood directed from afar. <laughs> Some Londoners most unwisely make for home, thinking they ought to make an early start. Now we can take the dog out for a bark. And Elfriston becomes itself again, under the shadow of the Sussex Downs. If I may quote two lines from Thomas Gray, and leaving out the one that's in between, the lowing herd winds slowly o'er the lee and leaves the world to darkness and to me. Except for some late last Londoners who still savour the country quiet. At half past six, some villagers will go to evensong, for evening is a time when some of us are thinking of the evening of our lives and of the vastness into which we go, or nothings, or of eternal bliss. Whatever it is, for sure we've got to go, alone, alone, and time will part us all. And somehow, somewhere, waits the love of God. Sunday is sad, but Monday's so much worse for those of us who haven't any hope. Faith, hope, and charity. Oh, give me hope. Her brief accomplishment is somewhere there, the painting that she did, and tucked away. The match is over, and the game they played was much more fun than work will be tomorrow. Oh dear, oh dear, the agonies of youth. Oh dear, oh dear, the trials of middle age. But do they matter? There's the mystery.
John, although you, you love the past, you're very, you're very knowledgeable about the present, aren't oh, you? Yes, you? You indeed. know all the jargon. and I know. love the jargon. Yes, I think it's very funny. I mean, television commercials you love, don't you? Oh, yes. I like them very much. The vulgar they are, the more I admire them. The more uh, depressed I get, too. You don't like the news? No, I'm not in the least interested in the news. I don't think it has any importance at all. Have you ever been interested in the news and in Never. current affairs? No. Never, no. And you're not political at all, are you? No, not in the least. John, is there anything that you feel um, quite unshakable about in your convictions? I mean, whatever anybody else says. No. No. I don't think there is anything. I don't think I'd ever lay down the law. What about your, your belief in what you call the management? Well, I think the I hope the management is benevolent and in charge of us. I do very much hope that. But I hope. But hope rather than believe. Yes. Certainly. Hope's my chief virtue. Finished?